To bring it back to the numbers, Ralph, I'm looking at the screen here, Bitcoin trading at 42,401. Uh, it's only off about 5.3% 24 hours. Yeah, but it's mainly noise. You, you get used to this after a while once you've been invested in the crypto space is that, you know, it's an 86 vol asset currently versus the S&P's like 10. Um, so it's eight times as more volatile as the S&P. So a 10% move is just basically like the S&P having a 1% move. So it's not really that much of a that much of an issue. What is interesting is Bitcoin is very much following, we've talked about this before, its pattern from 2013. And Ethereum is following the Bitcoin pattern from 2017. And things like Solana are following the, the Ethereum pattern from 2017. And they all kind of suggest that this might be a decent entry point for a large run up to the end of the year. And that's how I'm thinking of this. Yeah, I'm looking at a calculator here that estimates Bitcoin volatility on a 30 and 60 day basis. Uh, estimated 30 day volatility, 4% daily. Estimated 60 day volatility, 3.7% daily. To your point, noise. Yeah. Yeah. And these things are. These things are noise. We've just had a decent run up. We've been correcting um, for the last few days. You know, we had a sharp move and nobody really knew what the news was. It was probably part of this. Um, and fine, it's it's kind of normal, I think, for most participants are so used to it. And anybody who's been in for a while, I mean, we, we had a 50% correction already. So like, this is like, bah, throw me a 20% correction, I don't care. Yeah. Talking about news cycle related events having an impact on Bitcoin, you had a really uh, impressive uh, tweet storm thread about the remarks by SEC Chair Gary Gensler a few days ago uh, when he came out with some things that seemed fairly bearish, effectively saying, I'm not sure that cryptocurrency as an asset class is going to be constituted in its current form for a very long time. Uh, you had some interesting insight about what that might suggest for the longer term, bigger picture, forward structure of markets and regulation in this space. I think the battle lines are being drawn. All people who are trained in negotiation skills will set the boundary hard in the most extreme they can. All trade negotiations, everything happens that way. And then what happens is you go, then go to the negotiating table and you're looking for a compromise and you're looking to get over your side of the line. So firstly, there's a couple of battles going on. Gensler has not got the right entirely to to regulate crypto. There's the OCC and the CFTC, and maybe even the Fed themselves who are interested in this. So there is a fight within, within Washington who regulates this. But obviously, if you're the head of the Securities Exchange Council Commission, then you want the word security to be attached to everything, as opposed to currency, because that goes to the OCC, right? So this is politics, for starters. But the question is, is are most cryptocurrencies securities under the definition? And the interview with Michael Saylor that's out on the platform today on Real Vision Crypto, we talk about this and they probably are. And that what freaks everybody out. Oh my God, it's a security. The security thing is a red herring because what does that mean? What it means is to issue things you would have to have more regulatory red tape. It's very costly to do. If it's a security, you can only issue it to certain people. So what are they going to do? Are they going to go back and prosecute 7,500 people for all of the tokens that have been launched? No, that's ridiculous. Are they going to cherry pick a few and try and take them to court? Yes, that's where the battle starts. What is a security and what does it mean? The, next, the end result is going to be a grand bargain because Securities laws written in 1934 are simply not suitable for this current time. And so the securities law themselves will have to change. Whether it's a digital asset law that comes into place or they rewrite securities laws, but that will change. Also, if you think about the political backdrop about the 99% and the 1%, the rich getting richer, if you honestly think it's a good idea to not give the public access to the best investment class in terms of performance the world has ever seen, then you are really making some bad decisions. So what does he want to do? He talks about basically consumer safety. And consumer safety, that
that's going to be about, I think, the, the onus has to go on the consumer. You and I can go to Vegas and throw anything on the table and lose it all, everything. We can mortgage the house and do it. No regulation, zero. But heaven forbid if we buy a token, because it might be a scam. Really, is that, if that's the issue, then firstly, give people warnings. You know, you, maybe the exchanges say, if you want to buy this, you have to understand it's a high risk asset because it's a low market cap. And therefore, you should, you should be aware that you could lose everything. That's okay. Risk warnings are fine. But to say you can't take a risk is crazy. This is why Wall Street gets richer all the time, because to get access, you have to do it via um, a financial institution. It's the same with venture capital. Yes, we can do some crowdfunding stuff now, and that's it's opened up a bit, but it's still not fully opened up unless you're an accredited investor. So apparently, if you have a million dollars, you're 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 not dumb money, and anybody less than a million dollars is dumb money. I mean, that's insulting to people. What does money define your ability to understand risk? No. Does it define your ability to take risk? No. What defines your ability to take risk is how much a percentage of your assets you're going to risk in it, which is risk management. Two different things. So all of this is going to have to change. The accredited investor rules, they're going to have to change. Just simply not acceptable to force the millennials, 86 million of them, out of a marketplace because somebody in Washington says, well, they're not safe for you guys. But leave it to us. Let, let the other guys deal with that. The rich guys in Wall Street. And you know, we'll give you a product after we've layered in some fees. No, just not going to happen. So there is a fight that's going to come. The industry will not accept this. And there will be a compromise. Because we know there's KYC. We know there's AML. Those are without question going to happen. Tax compliance without question will happen. And then beyond that, there has to be risk warnings, caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. And there has to be some regulation, some oversight over scams. So there's maybe some way of getting back money and other insights. But but for somebody to have, who's got the power, the voice of God to say, that is a scam and that is not a scam. Oh, well, you know, Polkadot, well, that could be a security. You can't invest in that unless you've got a million bucks. Or it, this is just cannot happen. If the US does this, this is the fastest growing adoption of any technology in all human history. There's 150 million people worldwide using crypto um, right now. <clears throat> by my estimate, we get to a billion dollar, a billion people by 2024. If that's the case, then this market is going offshore. It is not going away. And so regulating people, all you're doing is, is hampering the investment choices and the future earnings of millions of Americans. So I understand what he's doing now. He's laying out the stall. Everyone's gonna to have to go through court cases, Ripple being one of the first ones. And then a bunch of people are gonna to go to court over this and there's gonna be a big fight and there's gonna be a bunch of lobbyists that are gonna to have to be created for the industry. So this is not going away quickly and it's gonna scare the market occasionally. And then there's gonna be a lot of fud of people on Twitter going, see, they're gonna ban Ethereum as a thing. You must buy Bitcoin, all of this nonsense. Everyone just calm down. This is gonna take some time and it is expected and it has to happen. We have to get the regulations changed. And the SEC will work with everybody in the end. It's too big an industry. It also, it, it's total nonsense. Look what people are doing in Robin Hood, right? They're trading options, trading their life savings, and they know what they're doing, right? Nobody on Robin Hood or particularly the Wall Street bets crowd, nobody doesn't know what they're doing. They don't know how to invest, but they're taking long shots and they want to. Their risk appetite is not anybody else's business, as long as they're aware of what they can lose and that it's risky. As long as you do that, how much risk you want to take, up to you.